With me tonight is Dr. Teresa Knight, OBGYN from St. John's Mercy Medical Center. Dr. Knight, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Now I have to say I've been through a gamut of tests and all of mine very fortunately have been standard tests, but we truly do have a lot of different testing and technology that helps to track baby's health in utero. Absolutely, and I think really the, the technology that has grown the most has been ultrasound. Okay. And each year it seems like we have a little bit more that we're able to do with ultrasound. I think the biggest technology that I'd like for people to know about is something called a nuchal translucency. And explain that please. Okay. Nuchal really refers to the neck. Okay. And so a nuchal translucency is taking a view, an ultrasound of the thickness around the baby's neck. And it's done in the first trimester, preferably between 11 weeks and 14 weeks. And the purpose of doing that is to look to see whether or not there is a, an increase in thickness. Okay. The increase in thickness correlates very, very well to whether or not a baby is at risk for having Down syndrome or other, other types of genetic abnormalities like trisomies. Um, with that information, then people can make a decision as to whether or not they need to have additional testing to confirm if the baby is in fact, in, in fact infected. And one of the things that makes this technology so remarkable <coughs> is that 20 years ago when this wasn't available, this wasn't information that you would have until your baby was actually born. That's correct. I mean, all the things that we take for granted now, knowing the sex of our child, knowing whether or not there's more than one child. Uh, this <laughs> Very is a good point <laughs> that you never knew before. No, no. so there, you know, now we're, we're down to the details as to whether or not your baby has hair there's so much that we can see uh, on an ultrasound, both fun things like the sex of the baby and whether or not it has straight hair or curly hair, but also important things like the, the structural development of the heart and the brain. And there's tests that we have every time, sugar tests and those types of things just to make sure that all of our levels, our protein levels are at the right place. What about things like amniocentesis? Because I know that's something that many people are a bit confused about. Absolutely, and I think the big confusion is that the amniocentesis itself can be used for many different purposes throughout pregnancy. Okay. The term amniocentesis specifically refers to withdrawing or taking out some of the fluid from around the baby. And you can use that to check for whether or not, again, there's a genetic abnormality. You can use that to check to see if the lungs are mature, if a baby needs to be born early. Um, you can use that to check for infection. So there's a lot of different reasons why you might want to do amniocentesis. And the risk as to whether or not you could cause harm to the pregnancy depends on when and why you're doing the amnio. And the good news, again, about all of this technology is that, first of all, you can get a diagnosis, but secondly, not only are the diagnostic procedures much more advanced, but then the treatment procedures in utero. Absolutely, absolutely. And a good example of that, I think, would be the full-term fetal fibronectin test. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that we're really struggling to be, you mentioned that uh, we've done a great job of decreasing infant mortality, but we haven't yet done a great job of reducing the amount of preterm birth worldwide. Okay. And, and so fetal fibronectin is a test mm. looking to uh, figure out with those women who are having preterm contractions, are those women going to have preterm deliveries or not? Are they really at risk or do they just have uteruses that like to contract? Right. And so that's a good example of a test where you can, you can use then to decide who needs to have medications to help keep the uterus quiet, who needs to have medications to help the baby's lungs mature a little bit faster. All of which lead to healthier babies, healthier moms. Absolutely. Well, medical technology has certainly come a long way and it's absolutely amazing what can be done. So thank you so much. We appreciate the information. Thank you. It's been a privilege.